Brilliant. Welcome, everybody, to another Managing Happiness podcast, this time live. And today I have the pleasure of having Dan Lefebvre, Dan Lefebvre on um, the podcast or on the show. Dan is a growth coach for seven-figure entrepreneurs. And he's also a total personal development geek. And we have something in common. One of our favorite books is Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil, which he has read 30 times, which is, uh, I don't know, I've read it maybe 10 times, but he's been really been studying it. And uh, I had a call with him because he's a user of UpCoach, one of my businesses, and he gave us really cool feedback. And he also shared so many cool tools and books and suggestions with us that I want to have on the show. So Dan, thank you very much for being here. Awesome. It's great to be here, David. Pleasure. Um, how about you fill in the blanks a little bit in the intro in terms of kind of like, you know, how you got to where you are today and sure. then we can geek out a little bit on, on personal development and growth. Sure. Uh, well, I tried to give the short version, but um, basically in the nineties, I started a business with my brother. We were doing wireless telecom construction. And um, so we built that business seven figures and, uh, but I was in the office, I was, you know, doing all the business, you know, basically learning to fly the plane as we were building it. And uh, so, uh, but we, we did it, you know, we bootstrapped and uh, I was in my twenties and uh, we just figured it out. Um, but um, unfortunately we didn't see eye to eye, but uh, you know, I was very skilled and I'm very resourceful and I ended up getting picked up by a large telecom company. And I went over there and did project management. So I went from doing like, you know, these little projects of $100,000 or so to a $25 million project. <laughs> and I was like, what? you know, I just said, yes. Like they said, you know, you know, can you do this? Sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> right. So I said, yes. And then I did that for a couple of years and I actually went to a different company. I was, I was like a consultant. I was being hired on contract. And, uh, and then I went over to uh, this other company, um, because the, the one I was working for, they got bought out by a bigger company. They decided to put this project on hold. And I went, I went over to this other company. I did real estate negotiations, another big telecom company. Didn't know what I was doing. I'm negotiating with condo boards, all sorts of people that are way more intelligent and skilled than I am. But I'm negotiating them down to a, a level which I couldn't believe. Like they're, they're agreeing with my rates and stuff. And so anyway, but then I did that. And then I went and work for this company uh, doing real estate negotiations. I managed their commercial portfolio and I built that up to $24, $25 million. Um, but then all that said, uh, you know, I had a, 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 I could take a pause. Uh, I had a child being born and this company would give me 36 weeks of paid leave, you know, so. Wow, it's not an American company, I guess. <laughs> no, 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 it was a quasi government. So, uh, but anyway, um, you, you know what? And I was like, well, I didn't even know about it. I had a son, my first son, I worked at home for two weeks on holiday. <laughs> so you know, second one, I'm like, see ya, I'm gone. <laughs> so uh, I took off and I was gone for, th it's like, I've never been, you know, it's almost like being retired in a way. Uh, so I got the taste of retirement. But anyway, I also got the taste of what I didn't want. And I didn't want to go back to that. I ended up getting recruited, went to a different company. I was there three months. They called me into the boardroom and they said, you're fired. First time ever in my life. I'm very resourceful. I'm always the first hired, last fired. This time I'm gone. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what, what just happened? What happened? Yeah, what happened? And, and uh, you know what? I had to, I had to reset. And, uh, and I, I actually, I remember that day I called my wife and I said, uh, I just got let go and I'm going to be home soon and um, we'll talk about it. I'm going to Costco, I'll pick up a couple of things. <laughs> and that was, that was the dialogue. But then I did this soul searching and, um, Anyway, I ended up, uh, you know, my my friend who's a therapist, she said, well, what do you want? I said, I want to be with my family as much as possible and be inspired in what I'm doing. She says, pray for it. I'm like, all right, that's easy. <laughs> so, so I pray. And then the next day I get a call from my friend Jamie's father. He's doing this business. It's, it's in the health and wellness. You know, it's a network marketing. But anyway, I knew about it because I, I attempted doing this with him years ago. And then, uh, you know, he starts telling me about this new product and everything. And all I was thinking in the back of my mind, I was like, Ken Graham, that's the answer you're giving me. That's the guy you're sending me, you know, Ken Graham. Is that the best you could do? <laughs> like, is that the best you could do? <laughs> right? Like, that's my thoughts, right? And, but you know what I did? I said, yes, six months of grinding, trying to do that thing. And guess what? 
a friend of mine who studies Ogmandino, the 10 scrolls, you might know about that. Um, he gave me the 10 scrolls. I was reading those every day. I studied about the best salesman in the world. Yeah, the world's greatest salesman. Yeah, yeah. Salesman. so uh, haven't read that one 30 times, by the way. Uh, but, 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 uh, but yeah, he gave me that 10 scrolls and every little scroll had something in it. Like, I will greet this day with love in my heart. I will multiply my value a hundredfold. So if you read them three times a day, every day for 30 days, that's 90 times each scroll, five minutes mm -hmm, each. Mm -hmm. I was doing that every day, morning, noon, and night, morning, noon, and night, morning, noon, and night. And so those little phrases stuck in my head, but also it led me to look up Ogmandino, found out he's dead. I found Dave Blanchard, CEO of Ogmandino Corporation. He had a new book. He said, get 10 of my books. Give them to your friends. Get eight weeks of coaching. I'm like, man, I could use some help. I got nobody on my team, nobody on my side. Like, please. Yeah. So 200 bucks or whatever, I got eight weeks of coaching. Then I messaged Dave and said, hey, I'm flying into Salt Lake City. I see you live around there. Maybe for this other business. And I said, maybe we can meet for a coffee or tea. And he asked me when I was flying out. I said, Sunday morning. He goes, come and stay at my house. I said, oh. Well, Dave, slight problem. I have a friend coming from Minnesota. Bring him. I'm like, man, you don't even know us. <laughs> right? so, invites us there, treats us like kings, shows us a movie in his theater. He's got a beautiful house, right? And um, anyway, uh, very inspirational movie. And then after I said, because uh, I'm, I'll ask anybody anything. I said, show me where you work your magic, where you do your videos and your business. And he showed me his office. We talked a little bit. And then he said, you know, Dan, I think you'd make a great coach. That was the start. That was the, the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, Dave and I didn't reconnect, but a friend of mine was studying Bob Proctor stuff. I flew home. I connected with her. She connected me with Bob's stuff. I bought all of his programs. I spent like 10 grand or whatever. I just, I needed to learn. I, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, but I learned this. I grabbed his programs. Next conversation, she says, why don't you talk to his team about coaching? I said, sure. I got on a call with his team. 20 minutes in, the guy says, let's get Bob on the phone. I'm like, okay, I don't know who Bob is. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. So that night, Bob's on the phone, pitches me on becoming a coach. And because I bought all his programs, he said, okay, we'll give you a cut and a deal on, <laughs> on the co you know, certification. I'm like, fine. So I invested 20 grand. I had no income. My wife was home with kids and stuff like that. And I just said, all in. And, failed. All in. Yeah. yeah, all in. So my whole process is saying, yes, 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 yes. Even if it felt uncomfortable, I just said, yes. I felt the fear. Did it surrender anyway. experiment. Yeah. Did yeah. you read so, Surrender Experiment? No, I didn't, but I heard about it's, it. It's, I think it's, it's, it's a similar thing. He always said the one to like fight this voice in his head that was full of fear. And, you know, I just said yes to everything. And he built like a giant empire. By, by doing that true story actually really good book yeah 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 so it, it's on my reading list i just haven't picked it up yet but yeah that's the thing so i just kept saying yes and then i co-authored a book with jack canfield dr dennis waitley and deepak Chopra. said yes um you know i, I just came I, I keep saying yes i sometimes i said yes to things i invested like 25 grand in a mastermind i got a little bit out of it but now i'm realizing i'm able to take that knowledge and curate it and put it into my program so there's there's value in it but at the time, probably I, I could have said that was a waste. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> You're basically living the movie Yes Man. <laughs> yeah, Do you maybe. watch this Jim Carrey? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. What's that word? <laughs> Say it a million times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, awesome. so, yeah, I just, you know, uh, very that's cool my, story. That, what's, that's what's, my the book you, what's, what's the book that you wrote? It's called Living the Life of Your Dreams. And it's how to how not how to stop working insane hours and, or being crazy busy and live a full and happy life, um, and it's basically reverse engineering your life from death backwards. How do you want to be remembered? But then I have the fave five, which is faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances. So I challenge anybody to live by those standards. Put finances at the end, the caboose, right, mm -hmm. and then put the faith at the. At the, front. At the, the, the front, the engine. Yeah. So, so it's a system for doing that because if you think about it, if you want to live a full and happy life, life worth living, life worth dying for, you need to go to the end and think about how you want to be remembered, reverse engineer it, and then start doing the things that you need to do now that will take you there. It's very similar to managing happiness. You know, uh, it's, I guess there's just a few universal truths you know, that apply and people kind of like slice them up differently. 
right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of it really break it down. It's about family. It's about mindset. It's about faith, love, not fear. Uh, you shared a few very cool tools with us. One of them was the decision making loop, kind of talking about mindset, and this is something I'll um, definitely keep on sharing. I shared it on LinkedIn, got like a lot of um, positive feedback. Um, actually, if, let me see if I can find it. Maybe you want wanna? Can you share it, or do you want to? I can. Like, I can. Yeah. yeah, I got it here. So let me share it. Let me just. Oops, I need to. You can share your screen. And then you have to allow sure. this. So. this is yeah, smart. there's a way. Do I press the plus, add source? No, you press the. Share screen. I got it. All right. Okay. We just need the right screen. It says screen two. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. You tell me if you see it. Um, or are you see. seeing something else? I see this. Yeah, no, that's not it. <laughs> One <laughs> sec. That is screen two. I just don't know why it's not uh, coming up. But um, one second. Let me just, that is screen two. No, it's finder. You know what? I'm just going to move it over to screen one, and then that solves the problem. I just won't be able to look at you. <laughs> but it's OK. Um, all right. But, oh. Seeing it? Yes, now I see. You see that? Yeah, is it there? No. Actually, let, let, let me find it. I'll find, I'll find okay. it on LinkedIn. Um, um, where is it? Things I've shared. Maybe you can kind of talk talk us through it. Sure. What I'm looking sure, for. yeah. Well, this this is a fascinating system, and it's it's very unique because it it's going to help you move from being a victim, which is in pain, to power. Um, you know, from being uh, you know to be more accountable. So it's it's about living with intention, and um, you know the only way that we live with intention is to uh, is to be accountable, be responsible. And think about you know what we want and what that looks like, what that feels like, and and be you know taking action towards consistent action towards what we want. Um, so it's uh, you know it's a very interesting model because um, most people don't realize, but they fall into the victim loop. It's not a bad thing. It's just they do. And uh, the thing is, in the victim loop, that's where we ignore, we deny, we blame, we resist, we hide. Those are the characteristics of somebody who's in the victim loop. And we know people like that, people who blame. Um, and, uh, you know, what the, the, the interesting thing is that the whole legal system is based on <laughs> being a victim, right? That's why they have the word victim in there. Um, so, yeah, you have it up there, yeah. So, so the, the whole thing is that, you know, if you're blaming and complaining, it's victim, it's victimhood, and uh, and like I said, the whole legal system is based on that. It's like who's who's at fault, who's to blame, mm-hmm. and uh, so so if you think about it, you know, if our culture is about blaming and complaining and, and finding fault and, and pointing the finger, then we're all acting as victims in some respect if we engage in that. Um, so you know, that's the that's the thing to recognize. Do you want to be a victim? Nobody would raise their hand and say, "Yeah, please, I, I love being a victim." Um, but if you can recognize that, yeah, blaming, complaining keeps me in this victim loop, that's the feedback that I'm, I'm going to get. It's a feedback loop. And uh, so if we stay in that, in that mindset, that mode, and keep blaming and complaining, then guess what's going to happen? You know, we're going to stay there. And listen, you cannot live in the victim loop. Like one, even one toe cannot be dipped in the victim loop and one in the accountability loop. You cannot. It, it doesn't work. It's like driving a car down an icy road in an ice storm with two tires in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> You're going in, right? You're going to land in the ditch. There's, there's no, like, so you, you can't have any of your, your thoughts, your mindset, your actions, anything in the victim loop. Otherwise you are in the victim loop. You can't, you can't be in both. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. That's not, not how it operates. So, um, so if you want to move into accountability, you got to live with intention and you have to, and, and besides that, there's, you know, you want to be in gain mode. You want to be always looking for gains, progress and measuring backwards, measure from where, measure where you came from last week. 
how are you better this week than you were last? Otherwise, you know, how, how are you going to move forward and, and how are you going to feel good about it? Bottom, and, and here's the thing, like Dr. Joseph Murphy in his book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, he taught us that what you think and feel you create, you create what you believe. So reverse that. You're creating what you believe. And how do you create what you believe? You create it with your thoughts and your feelings. What are feelings? Thoughts moving through our body. Oh, okay. So then what do we have to do? Go right back to our thoughts. Get our thoughts under control. Tough. For me, it's, you know, we talked about this at length thing, the love, not fear thing. You know, it's kind of like my, my personal mantra. And this loop also really describes, like, if you're in the victim loop, you're full of fear. And if you're in the accountability loop, it's kind of more, more acting out of love. And if you're... Your, your emotions are the barometer for this. If you feel good about something, keep, keep rolling, right? And if you don't feel good about something, take a step back. Like think like, why does this not feel good? And then often you can figure out where you're stuck and kind of shift into this different loop or state, state of mind. Yeah, well, and even think about this. Like if you don't forgive somebody, it's like having a big gash on your arm or on your neck, right? Like, you know, I know in the SaaS industry, I think or software, if you have a bleeding neck issue, right? Cut your neck. You need to get that thing stitched up right away. Otherwise you're going to bleed out and die. So if you don't forgive somebody, it's like having a bleeding neck, you would take care of it. So you need to address that immediately. Otherwise it's going to fester and get worse. And my uh, mother no used to say, if you hate somebody, it's like drinking poison, hoping the other person dies. Yeah. 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 So, so you need to, you know, you need to release things that are other people's problems because guess what? If it's an issue with somebody else, you're giving up valuable real estate, real estate in your mind, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, you're thinking about them and the problem and the concerns and everything like that, and you're keeping it alive. You need to end it. Uh, I've, I've even had people that I work with that I told, I told them about this. I said, you know, it's like having an open wound. You need to solve this. You can write a letter or you can go see them or whatever. And this particular person was going to see her father in Scotland, went over there and told him the whole thing. Like blew me away. <laughs> I was like, I didn't expect you to do that. <laughs> but, but yeah, she just opened up everything and just put it on the table and then that's it. It's, it's released. So yes. you know, I'll mention something else about that too. It's the, the victim loop is, is think about it in two mindsets, resistance mode, versus receiving mode mm -hmm. you know think about like christmas birthdays you want to receive right so <laughs> yeah you want to receive you expect it right if you don't receive you're like what happened <laughs> you know did i do something wrong <laughs> do i smell <laughs> right you know right so you think about that you want to receive right so that's receiving mode we know what that's like but if you're in the victim loop you're in, you're in resistance mode. It's like a bent garden hose and you're cranking up the volume on the water. And you're like, oh, no water coming out. Work, yeah. You got to unbend the hose, right? And, and let it go. Otherwise, you stay in resistance, victimhood, and it becomes a pattern. It's a feedback loop. And then you end up at one point saying, my life sucks. <laughs> so who wants that? Nobody. <laughs> um. Getting back to uh, what we, I don't know if we talked about some on the podcast or before that, um, Outwitting the Devil, actually we mentioned this, you, you read this book 30 times, like, uh, so, and, you know, I'm, I'm, it had, it's probably the book that had the biggest impact on my life, you know, so I want everybody to read it, so if you haven't done it, please do yourself a favor, Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil, um, what were your key takeaways from this and how did you implement them into your life? Well, I'll say this, you may not like this and, and most people probably won't like it, but um, one of the key takeaways in there was that he talked about people that are users of narcotics or cigarettes or coffee or alcohol, you know, anything of those kinds are basically drifters. <laughs> right? so, I, don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm, no. It's... Good. Yeah, so good. So it doesn't impact you. But yeah, for a lot of people those are natural things for them to drink coffee and drink alcohol and socialize and whatever, right. And maybe smoke cigarettes or other things too. But you know, the thing is those, the, the, for me, that was really clear. So now I can, I have a filter. So when I see people, um, my filter is, you know, are they a smoker? You know, are they, are they hooked on anything? Because, you know, by definition, they're a drifter, <laughs> right? Not that I, I don't necessarily care to label them or not, but, but the fact is, 
it's going to tell me, do I want to engage with them? And, um, and, and, and yeah. it's, it's unpopular opinion, but especially in the US, but in Germany, we have like, like this, for example, if you're late to meetings a few times, we see you because if you, if you can't get this under control, then other areas in your life are also not under control. If yeah. you drink too much, you know, or if you cheat on your wife, you know, like, You'd happily cheat on me as well, you know, in, in the mm-hmm. business relationships. Kind of like if, so having these, or if you have body odor issues or whatever, you, you don't, you know, you're not clean enough. If one area of, his, of your life is not intact, this means that this, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything, you know, then, yeah. then other things are, are often also broken. So it's, it's, this is also actually, uh, you know, I have a lot of businesses and I work with a lot of people and this is like one key thing for me, how you do one thing is how you do everything. This is how I filter if somebody is going to be, if I want them in my close circle, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're tapping into something else and I actually just wrote about this yesterday. I just wrote a short article about it, but it's about having a code of honor. Now, back when there were knights, they had code of honor and it wasn't just for chivalry it wasn't for getting the ladies right you know <laughs> they did this because that was part of their culture so they had a code of honor so if we have a personal code of honor which i do it's basically just you know 10 to 15 statements based on how i think and operate so i know that like i'm very clear on that i can live by that it's on my wall it lives there and my family knows it, right? So if you have a personal code of honor, then you know who you are. Pythagoras said, know thyself. So we should know ourselves at a deeper, a really deep level. Then we know how we can communicate, relate and associate and communicate, you know, and, and work with people. Um, but, you know, just having that, those standards, most people don't have standards today and you see it, mm. you know, it's like, what's your, what price? What's, the, what's your price? <laughs> you know, like that's, you know, uh, you, you could like I watch. There's a Mr. Beast uh, guy on YouTube. Some people's price is five grand. Like he hands him a briefcase, right? He's like, "Would you take five grand to m- miss that shot?" Yeah, you know, pff, they miss. <laughs> throw it, <laughs> throw it away. Boom, five grand. That's their price. You know. Um, so you know everybody has a price, but if you have standards, virtues, uh, values, principles, morals. And you know what they are. You know who you are. It doesn't matter what anybody offers you or puts in front of you. You say yes or no based on your standards, right? You're, you're not whimsical about it. But most people, they are whimsical because they don't have standards. So they just do whatever comes natural. So that, that taps in back you know, to Napoleon Hill you know, being drifters. So what does a drifter do? What's a characteristic trait of a drifter? Likely somebody who doesn't have standards. If they had standards, they wouldn't put the poison that they're putting in their body, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so they would use that mental faculty of, of rationalization better, right? So, you know, you know, by the way, we have six mental faculties in case um, uh, you're wondering. So uh, this is one of Bob's teachings. Uh, we have perception, will, imagination, memory, intuition, and reason. Those are mm-hmm. six mental faculties. Most people don't use any of them. Are they at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know hey what do you want for your future i don't know <laughs> that's imagination that's a- right that's imagination they don't even know what to what to think of it you know well what if you could have some what if you knew one thing you could have i don't know <laughs> right. actually I, I was in in that i never really knew what i wanted um you know kind of like when i was in in school we always had these books at the end of the year where you kind of like write and everybody everybody had one and they you pass them around to the other kids in, in your class and they write something in there you know hey i'm david i'm blah i live here i do this blah whatever and one thing is what do you want to become you know kind of when, when you grow up and never knew what to put when i was nine years old i wrote i want to become 10 years old because you know, i couldn't <laughs> I couldn't really see what, what i wanted to do and uh, i was really i mean, I was struggling with this but then i just like did stuff and one thing kind of led to the other and i realized like, okay i like this and there's not so much you know so i think just um it i guess it's okay if you don't know what you really want but you should work or it's ideally you work on it to figure it out you know just like sitting there thinking about this will not give you the enlightenment mm-hmm. but just kind of like constantly yeah doing stuff you know action will will lead you there yeah and you're tapping into something else which is great because this is like a great segue um I learned about writing what you want every day. So I started this practice a few weeks ago. I'm probably going to do it for, I don't know, 
thousands of days. But uh, there's a guy named Dan Sullivan. He owns a company called Strategic Coach. Mm -hmm. And he did 25 years of writing what he wanted. He only missed 12. And, uh, and then he shared his results of that. And I'm thinking, man, that is powerful. Just writing what you want. You might repeat yourself. It doesn't matter. But now your subconscious mind, which is actually ruling your life, it's producing 96 to 98 percent of all the results. It's just it's getting wired for that. You know, like you, you probably heard of Hebb's law, you know, neurons that wire together, fire together. So mm. you're just firing neurons every time. I want this, 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 this. You're just labeling the bullets, you know, the bullet points of what you want. And your subconscious is eavesdropping, listening in. And then your reticular activating system, which is the RAS, it's going to go out and solve this. And say, okay, he's told me enough times he wants a Tesla. I know he wants a red one and the, what, you know, S model or whatever. I don't know what the models are, you know, and let's, let's just give it to the guy. Let's find it, right? Let's find him, give him a way to get it. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a German engineer and I was like very anti woo woo stuff. But uh, vision boards really work. You know, I, I made the vision board in 2012 and like everything on there is true, even, you know. And I kind of like just like visualized it like after meditation, like mm -hmm. after my daily med meditation session. Um, and the house I'm living in today looks very much like the one I had on there. I had Richard Branson on there just because I liked him, not really thinking anything about this, but just kind of like, you know, being an entrepreneur like him. Did not consider that he has lots of different businesses and now I have 10 different businesses, you know, so kind of this, this portion became true as well, you know, and like, uh, yeah, public speaking, lo lots of other things that were on there became reality. And so I don't know why it works, but I'll, it works. You know, so Well, because, because what Napoleon said in Think and Grow Rich, dominant thoughts, you're, you're like, dominant feeding, thoughts, yes. and Bob Proctor taught us this, your subconscious mind sees in pictures. And it doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not. But mine mine does not cause that aphantasia. I don't see pictures, <laughs> but <laughs> from yeah. these logical concepts, yeah. But it but it will it will take whatever you're giving it and then produce results. Like it'll give you opportunities. Um, even like there's there's even uh, you can make a movie version of of uh, vision board. It's mind movies. I have one, so you just make a movie with little affirmations on it. Um, I put mine on a YouTube, kept it private. I just play it. And I can just look mm. at that and play music to it or something or whatever I want. But, you know, just giving your, your mind, your, your, you know, it's like marketing. You're just dripping that little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Like you're drip, drip marketing your brain. This is what we want. Uh, you know, let's go get it. Right. <laughs> if you don't know what it looks like, here's a picture. Right. So. <laughs> Actually, going back to the victim loop, I decided a few years ago, not, I do not care about anything I cannot impact. You know, this is why I do not watch any news because I can't impact it. You know, it's like yeah. uh, most of the stuff I can't impact. Um, and if there's any issues, I think about like, you know, um, what's it called? Serenity prayer. You know, can I, can I accept this, you know, or can I change this and kind of like, okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I used to worry about a lot of things like from conspiracy theories to whatever, but I just like, you know, focus on like what's in my circle of influence, what can I impact? And I do not care about anything else, you know, even like starving kids in Africa, it's, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing. And um, I'd love to do something about this, but if I put, I have to pick my battles and I only have like a certain amount of gunpowder. And if I put yeah. like a little bit everywhere, it's just going to make like, you know, versus like, having an impact. So I just tend to just focus on one thing at a time. Maybe I'll get there at some point, for example, like plastic, I think it's like the overconsumption of plastic is, is a really bad thing. I want to do something about this at some point, but I chose not to, to, you know, already got some domains and some ideas, but I'm not focusing it right now. Cause I have, for example, managing happiness, something I'm, I'm pushing right now. Yeah. You know? Well, that you're tapping into, you know, what do we control ultimately? I mean, if you break it all, like if you just wind it down, boil it down, we only control our thoughts. We only control what mm -hmm. we're thinking. That's it. You know, it doesn't matter who you study. It could be Neville Goddard, Florence Shin, uh, all the people, even in the Bible, it talks about, you know, well, that, that our thoughts become our things. Even Wayne Dyer said that, you know, you're going to get what you think about whether you like it or not. <laughs> and it's true, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, you don't, we don't realize our thoughts compound and produce a result. But we're not, we're not that observant to realize, oh, if I just connect the dots that led me to this, incident you know let's say a car accident 
what made led me to that? You know, you, you map it backwards and say, okay, what, what got me here? Uh, and then you realize, oh, um, I, I get it. You know, I, 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 you know, I let this happen. Like, it's almost like some people want to say that person, I had to divorce them. They were horrible, right? <laughs> you know, they're bad people and a bad person. Well, didn't they choose them? Yeah. Okay. So then, you know, now it's 50, 50, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, so now, now it becomes a realization. Okay. What was the selection process like? Oh, it wasn't very good. We were both drunk at a bar. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we know where it all started, right? And, and where the mistake happened, right? There wasn't any clear definition of what it is that you wanted. So, yeah. Accountability loop, you know, recognizing it, owning it, forgiving, self-examine, yeah. learning from it, you know, and take, take an action. And only focus and work on things you can control. That's it. Yeah. Like I have a complete system like that. You you know about it. It's a 12 weeks planning system. Only thing you can control because if you put anything else in there, you're going to fail. That's playing not, you know, you're, you're going to play to lose. You want to play to win. So you position it so that you can do things that you have full control over and nobody can mess it up on you. I mean, a tornado or something could, but, you know, <laughs> outside of that, you, you get it done. Good, good segue into... Um... Uh, your your planner like how can people get this planner because this is something that you you give away to people how, how where can they find this sure well i'll tell them where they can find it and then i'll give them some context around it but um they can get it at lefavecoaching.com forward slash free focus so just my name coaching.com forward slash free focus and it is it is a discipline system like it's a system you know it, um you know it's not it's not like james clear has a commitment device this is a discipline device <laughs> so literally you know so basically the way it's designed is you're focusing on your business health and well-being and relationships but the ultimate focus is getting your business where it needs to go uh, thank you i see that yeah uh yeah well you see where it's leading to get getting things or get things done <laughs> but um so this system is all about you focusing on your highest priorities and getting 12 month goals done in 90 days. So really intense and focus and compressing things down. Like it's it's a sprint. It's not, you know, a casual walk. It's a sprint like full on. But but it's measuring only the things you control, focusing your attention on your highest priorities, measuring backwards. Always what are the gains since last week? That's the whole system. And if you use it and you have accountability, you need an accountability partner. You know, we're not that honest with ourselves, right? truthfully. You know, <laughs> we, don't, we don't say, hey, bad you. We're like, oh, I'll do it manana tomorrow. Right? <laughs> and, but we need to be honest. So we need somebody else that's there who's going to call us on it and say, oh, wait a second. You said you were going to do that thing. Wasn't done. What happened? What got in your way? And then you know what to fix. Those are the breakdowns. Um, you know, that's a, that's a critical factor. Like, you know, there's, there's too much distraction going on in the world. We're still adapting to the internet and, and all the technology that we've built in the past 40 to 60 years. You know, we're, we're not, we're not at homeostasis or anywhere near it. <laughs> right? so, you know, yeah. So, so we need to like corner ourselves, you know, and lock ourselves in a room, you know, think of it like an escape room and then I'm there helping you get out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, accountability piece is also something that man should happiness that we're doing. It this is just like make makes all the difference. If you're just like yeah. doing it by yourself, it, it's super hard. You know, initially I had my course, I only had a seven percent completion rate. How many people that bought the course? Only seven completed it. And uh, now with the cohort based thing, where you bring people together in in accountability groups, we have like a ninety percent completion rate. You know, yeah. it's like completely changes the game. If you have somebody, also you know, if, if you meet on a regular basis and you commit to do doing something and you do not want to be the one who's not pulling his weight. You know, you want to, you know, it's positive peer pressure is a beautiful thing. I, yeah. Well, and, you, and I'll tell you a little bit about the psychology behind it. People don't want to show up and not have done what they said they're going to do because they will, number one, feel humiliated mm -hmm. and they will criticize themselves. And so everybody by nature is trying to avoid failure. So anybody who has high aspirations and likes high performance won't show up so you know people who are good students like who were a good student when they were in school they're awesome because <laughs> they, they just get things done yeah they just do it get it done you know uh they don't wait 
they're a do it now person. I like those kind of people. Mm. <laughs> so. I was actually, I was not a good student. I, I went to 14 <laughs> different schools. I got kicked out a lot. Actually, I was a really good student if I liked the teacher. If I didn't like the teacher, I just like did not care. I did not, I often did not even show up. Well, you were a good student in the right environment. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so. yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Dan, this was awesome. Thank you very much for, for jumping on. Um, people can find you at thefaithcoaching.com. Uh, you're also on, on pretty active on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, so yeah. I guess they can, can find you there. Um, yeah, and I'm, any... I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I have a newsletter and uh, always posting there and sharing insights, advice, research, you know, I'm a curator of information. That's just the best way to put it. So any parting thoughts that you want to share people like main, main, maybe main takeaway or main thing that people should, should implement to, to be on the A game. Sure. Well, if you're listening to this, it's because there's something that got your attention about it. And it might have been you like David, you know, or you just, you know, you like what he's teaching or you like the, maybe Napoleon Hill's work. Um, but we tapped into a few different things here, but I think the critical thing is if you can narrow your focus, that can make a big difference. This focus is today's IQ. So you want a high IQ, you got to focus. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, and, and you need to boil things down. I have something I call the CPSS method, which is complex problems, simple solutions. So you need to take things that are complex, break them down and then put them into a plan a system, like I, I'm giving you here, the 12-week the planning system, it's focused productivity. Uh, so if anything, grab that. There's a video in there. It'll show you how to use it. Uh, find somebody to help you implement it. If you need some help, you can reach out to me and myself or my team can help you. But th the bottom line is take, take action and do one thing. We talked about a lot of things here, but don't get caught up in all the information. Just pick one thing and, and do it. Otherwise, this is going to be shelf help and you'll say, 12 months from now, I should have done something. The world is over-inspired, but under-executed. So execute, take action. Yeah. Simplify <laughs> to multiply. You got to, <laughs> if you don't simplify, multiplying is not going to happen, right? So we know that. Awesome, then. Again, thank you very much. Very much appreciate you. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye. Take care. Talk soon.